Welcome to part six of lecture two of Watt body aerodynamics. So now let's fix, close out our discussion on this flow separation in a diffuser. So the pressure gradient is adverse. The pressure is rising in the direction of flow. The pressure is going to vary as long as the, the, the flow or the channel is not expanding too rapidly. The pressure is going to vary only with the x direction, not in the y direction. So it's the same outside and inside the boundary layers at a given x location. So that means that our one dimensional momentum equation says that the right hand side is a function of the x location only. So what this says is that the fast flow where Vx is large, sl right, basically it says this, is, this thing is a, at a given x location, this right hand side is a constant. So fast flow with large Vx will have small pvx dx. Basically it's slowing down slowly. Whereas where we have small Vx inside the boundary layer, dv dx will be larger and the flow will be slowing down more quickly. This means the velocity profile will be distorted as we move downstream. So this gets at the fundamental mechanism for flow separation. The flow separates because the adverse pressure gradient slows down the flow in the boundary layer more than the flow in the mainstream, leading to local flow reversal, where we thus get recirculation, which is essentially flow recirculation. So we start with sort of a healthy looking boundary layer here, and as our adverse pressure rating goes on, the velocity close to the wall decreases faster than the velocity far away. This starts getting, eventually we get an inflection point in the uh, velocity profile. Um, this is sort of the point of incipient separation. And then if we keep going, right, the flow near the wall will keep slowing down more than the flow here and will eventually get reverse flow uh, in a region. And that means that the flow is separated between location two and three. Now the behavior of boundary layers quantitatively are strongly affected by turbulence. So you likely learned about laminar versus turbulent flow as some kind of clear distinction um, where the flow is one or the other. But in fact, it's really the local behavior that can either be laminar or turbulent. So we talked about the free stream turbulence or the laminar versus turbulent boundary, la boundary layers. We can use quantity called the turbulence intensity, which is dimensionless, to define the level of turbulence in the free stream. Basically, this is the root mean square of the turbulent fluctuations divided by the time average velocity. Um, and if you've seen turbulence kinetic energy, this is just the square root of that. And this can vary from one point to another in space. It also requires specification of a characteristic length scale, um, normally with something we call the integral length scale, which is basically just the size of the largest turbulent vortices or eddies in the flow. The boundary layer turbulence is affected by the turbulence in the free stream. Boundary layers generally begin as laminar and at some point, depending on the pressure gradient and the Reynolds number, uh, the boundary layer will transition to be turbulent where it's thicker and more full. In other words, by fuller we mean that the velocity is higher up until closer to the wall. And when and how this happens is affected strongly by the level of free stream turbulence. So there's a few possible scenarios for our boundary layer development. We could have an entirely laminar attached boundary layer. This is sort of a well-behaved um, boundary layer on an object with a short characteristic length. We could have laminar uh, boundary layer with separation. This happens at low Reynolds numbers where the adverse pressure gradients are strong enough to cause the flow to separate, and the separated flow becomes turbulent but never reattaches uh, to the surface as we move downstream. We can have turbulent attached boundary layers where the flow transitions from laminar to turbulent and that fuller velocity profile helps keep the flow attached all the way to the back, back of our body. We can have turbulent separation where we have a transition from laminar to turbulence and then the adverse pressure gradients are still strong enough to cause separation of the flow. And we can have what we call a laminar separation bubble, where we have a separated flow um, that's turbulent, and because of the increased resistance to separation that that turbulent flow has, it reattaches, and we get a closed bubble of separated flow.